Hi friends, I'm Kuzema and I'm going to be sharing some knowledge on digital dental photography with you. What's the difference between di digital photography and dentistry and regular photography? Well, it's not much actually. It's just like you should know your way around using a camera and then make some modifications and then you're ready to do digital photography for clinical work. Why do you think this is important? Well, over the past few years, I have been doing dental photography and I've realized that it's become a big marketing value for my practice. It's become a free advertisement for my practice and it's easy for patients to see the kind of work that I do. Well, the patients that come to you, they want to know what kind of work you are doing. It's easy for you to show some magazines, some pictures from a dental magazine, some journal or some dental websites where a model has six laminates and it's beautifully photographed. But that's not what the patient wants. He wants to see the kind of work you'll be able to do, the kind of model you'll be able to make out of them. And that's where this becomes a great tool for you to market yourself and to tell the patient that this is the kind of work that you'll be doing. It's easier if you have a good camera and to record the kind of work that you're doing. And in the future, you can print it in journals. If you're talking about journals or any research work, you know, if you're going to print in a peer-reviewed journal, you got to have photographs of some quality. You can't just give them anything and they'll accept it. So if you know your way around using a camera and if you're doing good work in your practice, it's very easy for you to record things and then show it in a journal and maybe one day you'll be on a big podium with international audience and you'll be able to show your photographs with pride to them. Nobody will know the kind of work you're doing if you can't show it to them. And in the future, maybe you'll be printing a book. So over the period of years, whatever data you've collected can be of great use to you. Well, we've come a long way from film photography. If this was a film photography lecture, it would have, I would have to tell you about storing the films, storing the negatives, storing the positives, and making sure that you don't destroy them in any way, or your films don't darken out. But with digital, I have a database of like 25,000 photographs, and I know that they're just safe on a few hard disks with backups everywhere. I don't have to bother much because they're going to be there all the while. They're never going to deteriorate. They are never going to be becoming yellow in color or brown in color like you have your prints be becoming like that. So that is why this is much easier for me to save. I just have one hard disk. I don't have a cupboard full of negatives with me or some prints which are lying in big albums. I just have to have one hard disk, maybe two, so that I can have a backup and there I am. I have everything that I need with me. So I'm just going to begin with the basic. Why do you want to do good photography? Let's have a look at some pictures here. So you see here, here, there are a few pictures taken in surgery, maybe taken while doing some composite work. I mean, you see everything but the subject that you want to see. You don't want to see those mirrors there. You don't want to see the laceration on the lip in the patient. You don't want to see the drape, your fingers, with, with the gloved fingers in the, in the frame. Or you don't want to see the big mouth retractor. What you want to see is what's there really to see in the picture. So are we going to be showing this kind of work to your patients? That's not what the kind of work that even patients want to see or even what you would want to show in a, in a conference. And if you have a good camera, you know your way around a good digital camera. Look what you can do. This is the kind of work you can give to your patients. This is the kind of work you can show to your patients. It's very easy for the patients to get convinced when they see work like this, when you've recorded things well when you know what they have to see, when you're focused on what you have to see. So this is the kind of photography that I wish to teach you. And I'm sure it's much easy to learn. If you've gone through 17 subjects in BDS, it's not difficult to learn digital photography. It's just a matter of getting to know the basics of a camera and then use it for the dental work that you want to do. So let's just talk about the basics. What is digital photography? I have a small definition to Digital photography, it means it's a capture and storage of an image transmitted via lens, with the use of an electronic device. Now, let us just see what, what I mean by this. When you had earlier, when you had films, what did you have? You had a camera, you would go out and buy some film. You would load the film in the camera, making sure that you don't expose the film to light. And then what you did was you shot an image. There was a latent image formation. You gave the role. To a, to a photo lab, they would develop it and they would print the whole thing on a specialized paper. Now, what does this involve? This involves continuous cost. You need to keep buying films. You need to keep making prints because there was no way in which you could save the photographs otherwise. But with the, with the invent of digital photography, all this has changed to quite a bit. You don't have to continuously spend on films or you don't have to continuously get your prints done. 
all you need is shoot see the image print it if you like don't print it if you don't like so the difference being that instead of a film what we are using here is called a sensor the sensor is like the film it's like the brain of your camera what the sensor does is it takes up some intensity of light when you shoot the image it's the intensity of light that falls on the sensor this sensor processes this light into a digital format which is written on memory now this is a long process it's not great going into the details of it but this is how it works you have a sensor it records something with the intensity of light it reads it on to the onto the camera's digital uh, it reads it onto the memory of the camera and then you have the print or you can have just the image on the screen you need not even print it so you're saving a lot of money not printing the images that you don't need not saving onto negatives nothing here will deteriorate you just got to store them correctly you just got to make sure that you have enough backups and everything is here for you you can store them on one small hard disk and all your all your photographs are there for you to see any time so this is the basic difference that we are talking about so it has made photography a lot cheaper i was never into film photography because i could ne probably never afford it but with the invent of digital cameras i do photography for every purpose everybody knows you have your mobile cameras this this you can just record anything that you feel like and you not need not even print it now for our situation you're doing a case you're recording photographs on film you've shot a few photos but you don't know the result until you get a print and when you get a print what if some some of these photographs are blurred what if some of these photographs are completely out of focus you don't have a chance to go back to the patient and record the procedure entirely but when you have a digital camera with you you record an image you have a preview so instantly in the next second and the next moment you can think that okay i want to take another photographs you go ahead and take it you need not wait for the print to come back to you so that has made a life that has made life much easier when it comes to digital photography let's go to some basic of digital photography what i mean when i say sensor sensor is like the brain of your entire process you have sensors of two types one of them is called a ccd which is a charged coupled device and the other one is a cmos which is called a complementary metal oxide semiconductor now these are two different ways in which the image is read is recorded and read from the sensor onto the image that's too much technical for us to go into right now but this is most of the cameras that you buy these days will have a, either a ccd sensor or a cmos sensor now the problem is that when you buy by a small digital camera which is probably this kind of a camera then the point is that the sensor size is different when you buy a camera which is probably